Welcome to the Value Investor TV podcast. This is the podcast that helps you grow wealth and become financially independent. My name is Beko and this is Hari. Welcome to episode 11, Brokerage Accounts. Yes, Brokerage Accounts. Let's do a quick reminder of what we talked about in the previous two episodes like we always do. In the previous episode, we talked about SEC filings and before that we talked about going public also known as IPO. Uh, we talked about how some companies decide to actually stay private and now how that could be beneficial for some companies, but for many other companies that become big, it's much more beneficial to go public to raise money. And we talked about those things and uh, moving on. And then we talked about the SEC filings, 10K. We, we uh, took a look at the br- breakdown of, of 10K. Okay. <clears throat> In this episode, we're going to talk about brokerage account. So when a company goes public, they sell shares, the ownership shares in the public marketplace so that anyone can buy into the company. But as retail investors, you and I, how do you access that public market? And that is through broker, like broker firms, brokerage firms, the stock brokerage firms. So we're, we're going to talk about that today in this episode. So Hari, tell us more about the brokerage industry and what they do. Yeah, so you know, if you're trying to buy stocks, you know, the the only way that you can really do it, I mean, the, initially it used to be you could actually buy it directly from the company and they would issue you a stock certificate and that certificate could be then taken to a, you know, a broker or something like that and converted. Now all of that is kind of done, you know, digitally. Um but so essentially what it is is the brokerage account is your window into the company's um uh you know into the window of owning you know stocks through the in the stock market from a technical standpoint the brokerage actually owns your shares uh and you know and they're holding them for you in in your account um and and what they do is um they actually handle a lot of the uh you know the the overhead and, 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 you know, that kind of stuff like managing paperwork. So, uh, for example, you get a proxy filing, um, that allows you to vote for, you know, new, uh, shareholders. And, uh, you know, we talked about that a couple episodes ago. So the brokerage is the one that actually sends that to you, gives you that, um, notice they, they are the one responsible for sending you your annual reports, uh, via mail. Um, they prepare the tax documents for any shares that you do. Um, but, I mean, fundamentally what they do is, you know, you pay them a commission structure you know, and that commission can be structured in a lot of different ways, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and for that, you know, they hold those shares of, uh, in your account. Um, and, you know, they do this, um, you know, they do this also for not just, you know, individual, uh, share, you know, uh, stockholders, uh, re- you know, which they call retail investors, um, they also do it for institutional investors. So those the larger firms actually can use a brokerage account to uh, to handle that. And um, and they they you know the brokerage is the one that interfaces with the stock exchanges, the multiple stock exchanges. And some brokerages you can buy international stocks. Um, you know some are just all domestic. Um, so you know th- there's a variety of these you know these different uh, brokerage houses. But fundamentally their purpose is there to allow you to purchase, you know, shares of the stock, uh, and, and then manage all of the overhead that comes, you know, comes with that. Right. So, you know, they service the broker firm, the brokerage firm service, both retail investors, in other words, just regular people, individual people, but also institutional investors, institutional clients. Yep. Okay. Um, let's talk about different types of brokerage, uh, brokerage accounts. Um, tell us about different types yeah so the the old uh old type of uh brokerage account which you know you you may be familiar with it you know from movies in the you know uh in the bygone era um the full service brokerage firm so what the full service brokerage firm was is you know they they actually you know were this you know kind of like your financial advisor almost in some ways they would help you with uh, doing research for stocks. You would call them and say, hey, I've got a question about this business. And they could do research, give you stock tips. Uh, and then they would 
uh, place commissions over or you know transactions over the phone. So you'd call your broker and say, "I want to buy this uh, share," and they would actually take a two percent, one two percent uh, commission on the entire purchase price of the transaction. So those were full service brokers, and they you know they made a, a you know a, a lot of money a lot of that money. way. Uh, you know the old joke was that you know why do they call them brokers? Well, they make you broker, and while they get richer. <laughs> Right. And, you know, what that did was it it also artificially uh, or it, it lowered the transaction volume uh, from retail investors um, so that, you know, retail investors would hold uh, uh, shares a lot longer than, um, you know, than typical, you know, than what we see now. Yeah. And the reason for that was it was very expensive to make a transaction. Um I wonder, I would just wonder if that was the case for institutional investors as well, because they would have to use brokerage firm to make that transaction. Now, you know, you see the hedge funds doing microsecond trading, things right. like that, where commission may be, you know, close to zero. Yeah. Whereas in the past, these mutual funds or investment houses would have to, you know, that transaction fee is it's not negligible. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's, uh, you know, the, uh, there's a sort of friction associated with that. And as you've reduced the, you know, the friction with it, I think it makes it just a lot easier for people to transact. So for sure, there's more volume, there's more fluctuations, um, you know, in, in the price. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, sure. but um, that that's just, you know, the way the, the market is, yep. um, you know, and, and, you know, what happened was early in the, you know, the, all of these transactions were done by phone. There was no internet. There was no uh, electronic platform to really do this. Um, and they, those started actually predating the internet. There were electronic uh, transaction things. They were actually stock tickers that you could get, you know, for your home uh, that used dial-up uh, uh, services and things like that. Uh, and you know, even before the internet was popular, there were online brokerages. But when you know, in the mid to late 90s is when we saw enormous spike in the number of brokerage houses and those brokerage houses were called discount brokers and rather than taking a percentage of your uh, transaction they actually took a commission that was a flat fee structure so uh, I, I think e-trade when they first you know started was like fifteen dollars to twenty dollars per transaction and there there was a lot of competition in that space and you know, it wasn't unheard of for that price to drop down to five, six, seven dollars per transaction. Now it's fairly common to see numbers in the five, you know, five, five yeah. to you know, ten dollar range. Uh, and you know, now we have, um, you know, there's a there's a new type of brokerage that's you know essentially free transactions uh, called uh, called Robinhood. Uh, they're actually not the first uh, brokerage house that did this. There was a, a company uh, about six, seven years ago that did this. Uh, as as well, and they they offered zero commissions, and I think they got bought out. Um, but you know, so that kind of goes back to the question of well, then how do they make money if they're not charging you anything? Uh, and actually, even the discount brokerages do this by um, it's not just commissions that they make that can account for a large volume of of things uh, of their their revenue, but they also make money by charging you from what's called a margin account. So essentially, they can. If you qualify for for this account type, you can borrow money from the brokerage to buy, uh, uh, you know, shares in a company, and that margin account, you know, they charge you an interest rate, um, and there's a lot of you know risks associated with you know a margin account because essentially you're borrowing money. If the stock price, which could be very volatile, goes down, the uh, the brokerage uh, firm may actually do what's called a margin call, which is they will. Uh, take cash back out of your account to pay for the, you know, this, the drop in the stock price. Uh, and, the, or they may force a sale of your, of the shares that are held in that account to offset some of their losses. Um, so, you know, they, they make money that way. Uh, you know, not unlike, you know, the way a credit card company works, you know, with interest rates and stuff like that. Uh, and sometimes, you know, they have other services too. They offer research, you know, where you can, they have paid research, um, and you know, they, they, it's not just stocks that they sell. Uh, a lot of them will sell mutual funds, uh, bonds. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of different, uh, things that they offer, you know, some mutual, you know, some, uh, brokerage houses are also mutual fund companies like Fidelity. Um, 
you know, so they they offer a variety of services. Um, you know, I, I think, you, you know, we probably mentioned Robinhood before, you know, Robinhood actually offers cryptocurrency trading, which is, you know, fairly limited outside of, um, you know, Coinbase and some of these other things. So, you know, there's lots of different ways that you can get uh, access to this. Your your own bank may actually offer it. You know, my, you know, I've I've owned multiple different brokerage houses over the years, Ameritrade, Fidelity, um, and uh uh, e trade, and now I'm with Wells Fargo. Yeah. Uh, Wells Fargo actually gives me free transactions. Also, I, I don't know if they still do, but when I signed up, that was I got a hundred free transactions per year. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I make so few trades per year, it probably doesn't even matter. Right. Um, and you know, it turns out that Wells Fargo probably opened accounts in my name and stuff like that, so <laughs> probably won't you know stick around with them. So. Yeah. So there's a, we talked about a lot there. So different types of brokerage account we talked about. Full, uh, where you know you have the professional money managers, the brokerage account, in the bro- in your brokerage firm doing the research on your behalf. But a lot of times, you know, they they're conflicted in terms of in- your interest alignment, because you know it's it's a it's a per it's a per transaction fee. So their interest is to just get as much volume through as possible, because that's where the money comes from for them. Right. And so they might call up you know people they know that might hit the phone and say, Hey, look, Mister Whoever Whoever, come and buy this. Yeah. Even though this you know, stock may not be in the best interest for the for the investor, he might do that because that's in his best interest um, financially. And so that's yep. you know that we talked about we talked about that and then the discount. We talked about discount brokerage, brokerage account in nineteen you know, nineteen early nineteen nineteen nineties. Yep. A lot of uh, a lot of flat fee discount and then we talked about brokerage account that offer it for free such as. Uh, such as uh, Robinhood and and your service Wells and I know and I I am I bank with Chase and Chase um, independent uh, do it yourself investment account they provide I think hundred transaction for free or five hundred I can't remember but they just came out with the their own free commission free trading um, brokerage account yeah okay. Do you have anything else to cover on this one? Well, I think the, uh, you know, I, for the most part, you know, deciding which one of these, you know, you know, the the brokerages have different types of accounts mm. inside the the broker, so they have you know the standard individual account, which is you know just a, a normal person. You're you're gonna get it taxed based on that joint account. So <clears throat> you you can have an account with your spouse, um, and then a um, retirement accounts uh <clears throat> and so the retirement accounts there are various ones that can be set up through your employer or yeah. that you self uh, direct uh, uh and so on so you know all of those things have you know there are a lot of different implications you know and a lot of different things i'm not a tax lawyer you know i i don't can't you know advise you which one is the best you know to do that's something that may be you know worth reading about on the brokerage site to see if you qualify and if your company, you know, does matching, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and there's different tax, tax implications for all of those. So, uh, you know, you know, everyone's financial situation is different. So when you're trying to decide, you know, I want to do this, which account should I do? You know, the easiest one to pick is the individual account, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's in your best, um, you know, tax interest. Right. So, uh, you know, just read through those things. And if you have questions, you can talk to a, you know, your, you know, financial, you know, your accountant or, um, yeah, you know, other people. And in fact, the brokerages can also help you, uh, answer that, uh, as well. Mm-hmm. So the individual, so we talked about different types of brokerage account, right? Brokerage account being different types of brokerage account being the full service discount and then free brokerage, brokerage firms. Yeah. And then, and then they have different types of accounts within them. Correct. So individual joint um, joint you can do retirement all depending on your financial situations and they have different tax implications involved and just full disclosure I only have uh, individual uh, yeah I think you do I think well. a lot of I, I do as well yeah. um, you know when I, I set the, some of these accounts up you know over a decade ago yeah and I haven't you know I you know part of the thing with a retirement account is it limits how you spend the money like you know you can't um if you withdraw money from the account you have to pay taxes on it penalties uh, and there's a penalty associated yeah. with that so you know 
I used it more for freedom. Like, you know, I, I, that's why I picked an individual account. It may actually inside my retirement account, I may have been able to do some of the things that I thought I, I wanted to do. So, you know, these are things that you just have to kind of, right. Uh, you know, read up on. Yeah. Okay, so as a quick overview of the brokerage account, the brokerage industry, and different types of uh, accounts that you can open up. Um, I hope that was beneficial to you guys uh, in understanding how you can access the public market marketplace, being able to buy and sell shares of companies that are publicly traded. Okay, so that is it for episode 11, brokerage account. Um, Thank you all for listening. And if you like the episode, please do subscribe to our podcast, wherever it may be, be it on Apple Podcasts or on YouTube. And leave us comments and tell your friends we're just starting out. So it'll help us a lot. Leave us comments. And um, if you're on YouTube, please uh, go ahead and click that bell and and uh, subscribe and, and like and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks.